welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Discussions are underway on extending Operation Will and Leila into a second phase. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss what this could involve. Hi Terence. Hi Sanal. There is confidence that Operation Will and Leila will continue under the GNU's program of action. Yes, I think there is, even though we're not too certain about the final composition of the GNU and it's looking really precarious at the moment. Should we get over that line, I think this is a program around which there can be, as the documents that have sort of laid the basis for the GNU, for sufficient consensus, or more than that. Um, I think that both the African National Congress under pr uh, President Ramaphosa and the Democratic Alliance are supporters of the reform agenda that has been undertaken through uh, Operation Volendlela to date. And I think there will be broad-based support across the other parties as well for programs that will uh, you know, stimulate a recovery in some of the areas where we really have problems and then create a platform for economic growth. What were the key issues tackled in phase one and can that phase be considered to have been a success? Yes, the, the five issues tackled were the obvious one was the big one, was the load shedding crisis. And uh, generally the reforms that were stuck around energy for very, very many years uh, having all our eggs in the Eskom basket. And it was a failing uh, a situation where we had a single supplier monopoly that was unable to operationally and financially uh, sort of weather the corruption storms, but also the storms that associated the global financial crisis and uh, then the COVID crisis. So it really was struggling and there was a lot of attention paid to that. But there were four other issues that were tackled. <coughs> around freight logistics. We know the crisis around Transnet Freight Rail in particular, which really deepened during COVID uh, with a lot of theft, theft of equipment and certain corridors that almost became uh, inoperable. And then uh, the port, port system we know has been uh, a perennial un underperformance. That was a, that's, that's a big area of focus. Then we've had the water use licenses, which were just log jammed and that was a a big focus to get that system flowing again, and it, it is flowing again. And then there was the spectrum, that there were a lot of fights, legal fights around, and eventually that was auctioned under Operation Vulan Leather, got some money, but more importantly, has uh, sort of uh, unlocked the spectrum, which is very important for our digital economy and growth in that sector. And then th there's obviously this chronic skills crisis that f uh, South Africa faces. And looking at visa reform around that, especially around bringing in skilled, skilled work uh, workforce, and that there has been some progress there, but limited outcomes. So on the whole, I think there has been, uh, it's been mixed, but there have been definitely a feeling of success. And also the, the, it was very important in terms of bringing in a collaborative uh, collaboration, both inside government, and that is not always easy to achieve. In fact, government tends to work in silos and this broke down the silos within government. But more importantly, especially during the, the load shedding crisis, which we can't say is over, but uh, it was really, we really hit uh, really intense periods of the load shedding crisis, bringing in business to say that, one, to bring in business to say, can you help? And there was an open door there because it was existential for them, as well as to keep business interested in this economy because, you know, uh, large businesses definitely had their eye on maybe doing more outside of South Africa and saying that this is still an economy if we get this right and work together that we can you know, get back on some sort of growth path. And I think that, that just keeping that o open door and having this collaboration with business helped rebuild trust which had basically broken down. So it was very important. One of the uh, key things that I think uh, that we did during that period post-COVID during when it could have really collapsed really, really badly to have that open door and to have that conversation uh, between government, business, labor, but particularly capital which was looking, I think, uh, looking at South Africa and saying, well, is this now a failed state and do we have to look elsewhere? I think it was a very important structure and we've seen substructures that emerge after that the National Logistics Crisis Committee, NECOM in the energy space, which with those work streams underway, we've actually seen some significant progress uh, in some of these areas. And in the energy front, I think on the reform side, 
the big thing was, you know, getting rid entirely of the, the licensing requirements for distributed generation. And we've seen a lot of investment activity around that, a lot of registrations with NUSA. And some of those projects now starting to come into the system. Obviously, rooftop solar being important. And then I think the efforts that have been made collaboratively to get Eskom back onto some sort of even keel. And we are starting to see that also coming through. And then across the board uh, in logistics, water use license as well, there has been some pro successes. But I think that was the key one. What could be on the agenda during phase two? Well, I think the first thing that's on the agenda for phase two, if it continues, and I said earlier, I think it can, um, is to continue with the reforms uh, that are underway. I think we're just at the end of the beginning of some of those. You know, with electricity, we are only just scratching the surface of what we need to do architecturally to change the electricity system. And there's a big uh, legislative change that needs the president's signature. There are concerns about that, the Electricity Regulation Amendment Bill. There are some constitutional concerns relating to local government and what it means for local government and their prerogative to be distributors of electricity and reticulators of electricity. But on the whole, the architecture does need to change to reflect you know, the reality of what we need, much more private sector generation at the, uh, at the generation end, a, a, um, a, a not no longer vertically integrated monopoly. So a wires business that is fully independent and is able to look at the, the market and the system in what, in what is best for, for that in terms of generation, in terms of also storage or backup that's going to need to have to be procured. And then at the distribution end, uh, and that's where I think there are constitutional concerns, is there's a lot of work that has to be done. We didn't get the wall-to-wall -wall regional electricity distributors th through the door because of constitu constitutional concerns, but we can see that that is really now failing and it's the really the weakest link now in our electricity system. And we're going to have to find some sort of happy medium there with, uh, with distributors that are no longer, municipal distributors that are no longer able to do the job. And even with bigger distributors, bigger utilities at the Metro struggling, we're going to have to find some way of beefing that up. So continuing the reforms there, there's a long way to go around third party access to rail, third party access to ports. We're just at the start of that process. There's concerns about the network tariff charge that's going to be uh, instituted for third party rail operators, for instance. There's a court case still underway around the Durban container terminal and bringing private sector participation there. So there's a long way to go around those reforms and we can't take our eye off the ball entirely. But I think the next phase will also be looking at, to looking at, at one, dealing with the new burning platform. So we knew what the old burning platforms were, those five issues. And definitely I think local government is the burning platform that's emerging and we're seeing it around water, we're seeing it around electricity doesn't help just to have electrons being generated. They have to be able to get to, <laughs> you know, through your, into your house or into our offices. So that's a big problem around the distribution sector, water, the same thing. There needs to be a big focus there. So it's a burning platform. But I think there will also be a focus on trying to leverage higher uh, levels of economic growth. This is actually South Africa's biggest burning platform without growth. We can't have high employment. Without high employment, we can't eat into our poverty levels. And without eating to our poverty levels, ultimately we can't deal with inequality crisis. So we have to grow uh, as an economy. So I think there's, there's certain uh, offensive policies that they'll be looking to introduce. So uh, Operation Villanueva has been about fixing, been very much on the back foot defensive, but some offensive things. and. The signal is it's around the digital economy. We know that's going to be the big driver of our current century and beyond, and uh, green economy. And that's South Africa's got some unique uh, advantages in the green economy that we're not fully leveraging because of a lot of policy uncertainty, because of the lack of electricity, the dirtiness of our electricity, that's a big problem. But because of the resource in South Africa around wind and solar, there's an opportunity to swing in that direction quite forcefully. But I think we to industrialize around that, and that's where I think Operation Vullenlele could come in, we're gonna to need to be a little bit more assertive, 
not just in terms of providing a good policy framework and policy certainty, which has not been there, but also maybe in some areas, very targeted incentives to really get us across the line in certain green uh, industries. So I think those are things to look out for. But of course, uh, we have to come back to your very first question. Uh, do we need a government? And we need a government of national unity that is supportive. We need ministers that are supportive. We need a president. We know the president will be supportive, but we need to get across that line first before we can uh, get going on this. But it is almost a ready-baked, or uh, at least the ingredients are all there for the government of national unity to get behind this and move forward. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.